Today on the Save It For Parts channel, we're doing something almost normal, grilling some food. So we've probably all had this problem. You come outside to grill and you throw some tube meat on here and it just cooks completely unevenly. For some reason, the front is extra hot. The middle is like there's no heat at all and half of your wieners are burned on one side and raw on the other side. So it'd be really nice to know exactly where the hot and cold spots are on this grill. And yeah, don't get me started on how rusty and falling apart this grill is. This is the new grill that I bought, I think last year or the year before, and it had a cover, but that just rotted immediately. And then the grill just started to rust immediately. I think these things are designed to last maybe three years and then they just crumble into dust. I think this thing came with a grease catcher, but that was like the second thing to disintegrate right after the rain cover. Now you would kind of think the middle here would be the hottest, but it actually takes the longest to cook anything in the middle of the grill. It seems like these outer edges and then especially the very front and very back tend to be the hottest zones. So we've got three different thermal cameras here. The Viver handheld one, the top on that plugs into your phone, and the tiny, tiny little infrared P2 that plugs into your phone. Now this is not a review video. I have already reviewed each of these cameras in a separate video. I've already gotten sponsored for that. Now I'm gonna keep at least one, but I think one is gonna get donated to Sandland. I'm gonna give the other one to somebody else. And this is the only time I'm gonna have three thermal cameras in the same place. So why not compare all three for the same project? All right, our grill's heating up. We're gonna try the Top Don first. Okay, the Top Don does not like that. It uh, gave me a overheat protection warning, so it thinks the grill is too hot to look at. Next, we're gonna try the Viver, and we're gonna go ahead and set that to the higher measurement range that goes all the way up to 1,022 degrees. I didn't actually do that in the review. It looks like it has to think about that for a minute. Okay, so our next picture on the Viver, which I'll throw on the overlay here, is in the higher temperature range. Next, we're gonna try the little tiny P2 Pro. Okay, and that is also upset about the temperature. It says this grill is too much to handle. So we have two problems here. Um, first off, the grill is too hot for most of these cameras to see. And secondly, all we're really seeing is the temperature of the flame. We're not actually seeing what the temperature of the cooking surface is. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit and I'm just gonna put tin foil across the grating. That way we should see the actual pattern of heat and not just the flames. This is not a perfect situation. The tin foil is trying to become a hot air balloon and fly away. We've now suffocated the fire by having the tin foil over the top, so everything is flamed out. Okay, so my first idea didn't work very well, probably because I didn't click the tongs together twice. That's like grilling tradition right there. We've thrown a tray of food on here because I'm not just screwing around, I am trying to cook dinner. Let's see how well this reasonably large rectangular tray heats up and if we can tell anything about the thermal properties based on where the food is. I do have some tube meats too, which are quite frozen still. Since our little Android-based thermal cameras don't seem to be able to handle flame, our sheet of tin foil just turned into a hot air balloon and then snuffed out the fire. We're basically down to the Viver. I'm hoping that'll still give us some information about what's going on in here. Okay, everything's had a chance to sit for a little while. Let's try this again. It's still hard to tell much from the thermal camera. Some of these brats have been on there a little too long though. I'm pretty sure these are done, so we're gonna try one last thermal reading and we'll throw that as an overlay again. Well, I sure can't see any heat pattern on there. It seems to all be a pretty uniform temperature distribution according to this thing. Okay, so my attempt to be scientific about grill heat mapping didn't really yield any results. I couldn't tell anything other than the grill is inconsistent in its temperature, which we already knew. I did find out the Viver has the widest temperature range and kind of works the best for a semi-scientific experiment like this. I haven't quite decided yet if this is the one I want to keep or if we're going to use this out at Sandland for tunnel mapping or what we're going to end up doing with it. But those other two work perfectly well. They just don't like to look at something as hot as a grill surface. Even though this video was kind of technically a failure in that I didn't get the result I wanted. It's still kind of interesting, so I'm gonna throw it out there and I'll make sure to have the title say that it's a failure, so if people don't wanna see me struggle, if they're actually looking for something that uh, succeeded here, they don't click on it and get disappointed. If you did sit through this entire video, thanks for watching, and maybe we can do this again with some other instruments or some other heat source or heat sink that we put on top of the grill that shows the heat distribution of the fire without 
overloading the temperature sensor and without snuffing out the fire. If anybody has a suggestion for that, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe we'll try it. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.